I mean, you should probably change it. Because it's no longer serve.
Uh, to the uh, parishioners, I'd like to mention that we'll be uh, now starting outside for the ceremony of the lighting of the Easter candle. If some of you would like to come, you're very welcome. Um, you don't all have to, you can stay here too because we'll be bringing the candle in in just a few moments. I hope that you can hear the prayers from outside and uh, we'll uh, uh, be offering, uh, starting the celebration in just about a minute or two. The light of
You should do it here. Because okay. we have to get everybody lit. Okay, back. Back, back, back. You can, don't go forward after you say it because we have to light everybody yeah. back here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Light of Christ, thanks be to God. Go back and light people's candles. Go and light, light other people's. Light of Christ, thanks be to God. Light of Christ, thanks be to Should be centered. God. Should be centered. Rejoice, O oh heavenly powers. Sing choirs of angels. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud a mighty king triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory flood her. A blaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the light of glory's glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light. Invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with hardened love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our His Son, His only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's death to eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean, and the record of our ancient sinless. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which he slain the Lamb, and one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you ledge our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shot through the Red Sea. This is the night that with the pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the world under world our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us. O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that turned so great, so glorious our Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from that underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Drives out the hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, 
Accept this candle, a solemn offering. The works of bees and of your servant's hand, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the humble. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you, that this candle hallowed to the honor of your name may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let them mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets. Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us now listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people. And in these, the last days, has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. I invite you now to extinguish your candles and please uh, be careful in, in holding them because I know some are dripping, so just be careful as you extinguish your candles and hold them perhaps for a bit. And now I invite you to be seated as we listen to the word of God through the story of, of salvation. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, 
and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And Abraham said, Here I am. God said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains 
that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father! And Abraham said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When Abraham and Isaac came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. The angel said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offering as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
keep me safe, O oh God. You are my hope. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Keep me safe. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal Mystery make your servant Abraham, Father of nations, as once you swore, grant we pray that your peoples may enter wordly into the grace to which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. And one did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic he clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the children of Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. 
Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham. And inherit, and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, 
and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their ways and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty, ever-living God, 
sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, when the house of Israel lived on their own soil, they defiled it with their ways and with their deeds. Their conduct in my sight was unclean. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries in accordance with their conduct and their deeds. I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, in that it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when you, through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. From all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Steadfast. 
O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up. What had become old is made new and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being. Let us pray. O God, who made make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated now for the epistle. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, 
we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Heart and your holy lips, let me proclaim his holy gospel, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. According to Mark. To you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go up and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been risen. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord has risen. Alleluia, alleluia, just as he said he would. Alleluia. Let's all do that together now. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is risen. Alleluia, alleluia, just as he said he would. Remember that for the end of the homily. From darkness to light, from sin to salvation, from creation to eternal life. We tonight have been focused and experienced all this and our liturgical actions in the readings tonight as we celebrate the mother of all liturgical celebrations, the most joyful, the most glorious night of the church year. We began this service of the celebration with the service of light, which symbolizes Jesus rising from the dead and bringing light to all of us. The light of Christ has shone in the world, scattering darkness forever. And we heard in the readings an account of creation of men and women and the liberation of the Hebrews from Egypt, the sacrifices that were made and not made the disregard for the God the Father and for his plan. But this is what we heard was God's plan for humanity, from, for humanity, from the high point in God's plan for was the resurrection. And this is the greatest celebration of the church. This night is the most blessed night of all, as we heard in the Exalte, the Easter proclamation, Jesus' resurrection reminds us that there is life beyond the grave. Jesus' resurrection reminds us that there is more to each one of us than meets the eye, that we have a mortal soul. And though our bodies may turn to dust, our soul will be with God in eternal life. And what is the purpose of our life? What is our goal in life? Where is our heart, the heart of flesh that we heard about in our lives? Life has only one goal, to prepare for eternal life. And if we are not preparing for a resurrection, it is like we are using a GPS to get somewhere, but the wrong address. We have no destination. The three women that we heard in the gospel tonight they had, a, they had a designation, they were going to the tomb. But the Lord had already arose. And their biggest concern was, who was going to roll away the stone so that they could anoint Jesus' body? But when they got there, the stone had already been rolled away. Jesus had risen from the dead. But are we, but we ourselves, do we have a stone that prevents us from meeting the risen Jesus? We who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were also baptized into his death. And by the glory of the Father, we walk in newness and life in his resurrection as told to us in the words from St. Paul. In a few minutes, we will begin the baptism liturgy to welcome our sisters and brothers our new sisters and brothers into the church who will receive the sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, and the most holy Eucharist. And we have seen and heard the work that they and their mentors have done. We were with them from the very start and have witnessed the transformation in their faith. A seed was planted by our God and that seed was nurtured by the word. And tonight we practiced, because we are focused on the reverence and special graces that will be given them through the laying on of hands by Monsignor Pat, 
we know that they are focused on tonight and their coming journey in the faith we all share. Let us keep, a, let them, let us keep them in our prayers now and always as fellow brothers and sisters in the glory of Jesus. At the start of my homily, I stated that we are to be focused on what we hear and what we see tonight. And I'd like to extend that focus to something that is in front of us each time we are in this church. From the very start when I came to this church with Elizabeth, I've always been amazed by the back wall. And yes, we see the crucifix behind me and we see Jesus on the cross and what Jesus did for us. The more we look upon Jesus, the more we realize what Jesus has done and continues to do from us, for us. So much to focus on, so much to have faith in, so much to hope for. And when you focus on this back wall, you see Jesus. You see the tabernacle. But you also have to notice the colors. Gold, green, purple, red, and blue. The gold lines, just like the sun rays, radiating in different directions, coming from Jesus to all of us. There were 14 of these rays. And the number 14 in the Bible represents deliverance or salvation. It is used 22 times in the Bible. And we can think of that also as the 14 stations, as our story of deliverance to salvation. We think of the passion that Jesus went through, the agony that he suffered at each one of those stations and what he did for us at the hands of those who did not understand him, who were afraid of him. It reminds us of the suffering Jesus endured for us on Good Friday and every day that we do not act in love towards our brothers and sisters. The green of the leaves coming from the vine which symbolizes what God gave us in creation and the fact that we are all branches that grow from the greatness of the vine. The gold of the wheat and the purple of the grapes from which are made the hosts and the wine that are consecrated by priests and bishops around the world so that all of us, the universal church, may inherit the salvation that Jesus died for and offered for us to repair the relationship with God the Father. The red and the blue, the blood and water of Jesus that came from his side when pierced by the lance, the blood that washes away our sins, the moment we place our faith and trust in the saving works of Jesus on our behalf. The water is a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ and his teaching. As water is essential to sustain physical life, the Savior and his teachings, the living water, are essential for eternal life, beginning with the waters of baptism. Let us spiritually drink so that we may never be thirsty again. As we continue with tonight, let us focus on the words and prayers we are about to hear as we welcome our new members to our faith, as they receive the sacraments of initiation, and all of us together as we receive the most holy Eucharist. Let us be motivated by Jesus and the symbols that surround the crucifix and remember that in his resurrection, we have been given unlimited mercy and it's there for us just for the asking as is the hope of glory in eternal life. Jesus Christ is risen, alleluia, alleluia. Okay, we're gonna do it again. <laughs> Jesus Christ is risen, alleluia, alleluia. God bless you all. Thank you. Monsignor Pat and the community assembled here on this holy night, the following men and women are presenting themselves after they have asked to be admitted to the sacrament of baptism. 
Robert James Lord, Oluwotani Salami, Hadia Guksa, Kathleen Azuo, Lei Kwan Lam, Juyun O, oh, Nayun Yu, Mamed Yuseno, Ukar Akayeva, Chi K. Leung, Lai Zing Chai, Xiao Ji Ma, Benji Ju, Niku Mansuri. At this time, I'm going to invite all of you uh, to pray for these candidates uh, for baptism through a very special hymn uh, entitled The Litany of the Saints. What we're doing tonight is the whole church rejoices, um, all the saints. And, uh, and so it's very uh, traditional on the night that we rece receive and baptize people into church that we ask all the saints to be here, to be present with us and to pray for them. So I invite you um, to kneel and uh, I invite our candidates to kneel as we pray the litany of the saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, Pray for us, Saint John. Pray for us, Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us, Saint Stephen. Pray for us, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us, Saint Lawrence. Pray for us, Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Pray for us, Saint Agnes. Pray for us, Saint Gregory. Pray for us, Saint Augustine. Pray for us, Saint Athanasius. Pray for us, Saint Basil. Pray for us, Saint Martin. Pray for us, Saint Benedict. Pray for us, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us, Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us, Saint John Vianney. Pray for us, Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us, Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us, Saint Edward the Confessor. Pray for us, all holy men and women saints of God. Pray for us, Lord be merciful. Lord save your people. From all evil, Lord, us be praised. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. 
from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to our sinners. Bring these chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We will now have the blessing of the new water. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs, which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathe on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood you made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for it the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, give to this water the grace of your Son, so that in the sacrament of baptism, all those whom you have created in your likeness may be cleansed from sin and rise to a new birth of innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this font May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with them to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the candidates for baptism, I invite you to please stand. And I'm going to invite you to offer your profession of faith and to offer your vows for the first time in the presence of this community.
And to you all, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. And this, what we're going to ask you to now uh, to profess is, is something we say every Sunday, and that's our, our creed. And so I'll ask you this, and, and every Sunday from now on, uh, you'll be offering it at Mass with the rest of the community. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, who rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And this is our faith, the faith of the Church, which we are proud to profess through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to come forward now, one by one, for your baptism. Robert, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tony, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you need to keep the towel. Kathleen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You take the towel. Make him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Xu Yun, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can come up here. 
You can stand up a little taller here. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, a little bit more. <laughs> okay. A little, no, just your head. Just a little bit more. <laughs> Nayun, Haley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wenche, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And Jeff, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll give you a towel. Bani, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Mamat, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a little bit more. Alkar, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Nico, okay. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, we have received now, uh, through baptism, uh, these, pe these wonderful people into the church. They have become a new creation and have clothed themselves in Christ. And so in their color white, we ask, which is a sign of purity, we, we ask that they bring their faith on stain to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that they may have everlasting life. Amen. And we will now have the presentation of the candles.
we can do is we can have each candidate come down and get their candle, come down one by one. I now invite all of you to please stand. I'm going to invite you also uh, in this moment to renew your baptism promises. At Easter, Christians everywhere renew their baptism. And so dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to newness of life. Now that we have completed our Lenten observance, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And so to you, the community, I invite you to respond, I do, uh, to the following questions. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, who rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. And at this time, I'm going to now uh, uh, go through the church along with Deacon David, and we're going to bless you with the new water of, of uh, Easter that has been blessed tonight. And before I do that, I'm going to invite the, um, the, those newly baptized to go to each of you. You have your candles, and they're going to light your candles for you. using two volts. No? your ankle.
And now I invite you to please uh, carefully uh, extinguish your candles. Now I invite Sister to welcome those forward who are already uh, baptized in another tradition, but tonight wish to uh, become Catholic. We wish to welcome Ajibike Salami and Richard Yang. The Lord, the Lord welcomes you uh, here tonight. Of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come with your sponsor and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time in the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. I, Adjibikis, believe and profess all the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. I, Richard Yang, believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. Okay, and Richard, tonight the Lord receives you into his Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this family. And to all of you, I wish to um, offer my, my praise and and um, my admiration uh, for all that the work you have done over the past year here at our parish, along with uh, the Sister Teresa and the team that's with you, Sister Elizabeth Mary. And now we will have uh, the sacrament of confirmation. And I also invite those now to be confirmed also to, uh, to join uh, the rest of the group. To complete their sacraments of initiation, we invite forward Sonia Yang, Sun Jung Choi, and Lai Wang. So, I'm going to ask you to step down first row. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to re receive tonight, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. And my dear friends, to all the rest of the community, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. And we'll now anoint you with the sacred chrism. And I will say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you would say, amen. 
Then I'll say, peace be with you. And you're saying also with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. You receive communion tonight. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Well, what do you think? Isn't that great? So. <laughs> As you probably know, there's uh, quite a few people in our group this year. Um, I want to also point out the wonderful children that accompanied their parents in class, including uh, Haley Hirsch, who, who was baptized tonight because we felt that she should be baptized with her mother. And she'll be making her communion tonight also. And then I didn't confirm her because she'll be confirmed in grade seven. But in, in, anyway, she's been given two sacraments tonight, so she's, she's doing well. So again, uh, my congratulations to all of you, and uh, my thanks to the team, your sponsors. A beautiful night. So welcome to the Catholic Church, and God bless you. <laughs>
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish and for all who care for them, especially family members and all in the medical profession, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Katrina Lee, that they be received into everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today's Mass is offered for the deceased members of the Zelko family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our own hearts, our own personal intentions. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we commend all of our prayers to your love and mercy, those we have expressed aloud, those that rest in our hearts. We offer them in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to be seated for the offertory. <coughs> and I invite our candidates to return to their pews. The four that are bringing the gifts may go to the back. Please join in singing our offertory hymn found on page 392, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright. Page 392.
Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing, eternity, healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment. In the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. 
celebrating that most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we, we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of eternal, everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a sincere and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of our high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and blessing. Let us pray now for those who have died. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, 
Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, submit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O oh Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now with the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of this peace. It's with you. It's with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away 
the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I will invite the, um, those who newly received into the church tonight and their sponsors to uh, receive communion first as a courtesy to them and an honor. And, uh, and then we'll uh, uh, distribute communion to the rest of the community. Body of Christ. Body of Christ, 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 body of Christ. Yeah. Someone do the back, someone do the back, and then you'll sort out the Body of Christ. Body no, no, hold your hand. There you go. Amen. God bless you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Please join in singing our hymn 403. Now the green blade Body rises. Page 403. Body of Christ. 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 Body 
of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you. May Almighty God bless you. Body of Christ. Okay. Body of Christ. 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 Uh, firstly, I, I wish to uh, just simply uh, offer a few words of gratitude to all of you for being here tonight, those who participated in any way to make this holy um, Easter night uh, so beautiful and meaningful. And I know that there are probably some of you who in former years became Catholic 
at Easter. Anybody shine a hand at me? Yeah, a couple here. Okay, happy anniversary. <laughs> and um, but you know, it really is the anniversary of all of us because our baptism, uh, no matter what day we received it on, um, is a very special day. And so. Um, to receive it at the Easter Vigil obviously is a, is a special honor, but it, it's, uh, it, it just recognizes also that we're all baptized, and that's why the renewal of faith tonight that you made, the renewal of your vows um, of baptism are, 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 are not, you know, are very important, very important. As I was listening to the readings, the first part of the, the liturgy tonight, um, I was very moved. Um, by the choices, of course, that, that we were heard from, but also the way they were read. So I thank the lectors for the beautiful reading, the beautiful way you read them very beautifully and prayerfully. <laughs> um, it's uh, walking in the history of our faith. It's very hard sometimes to comprehend all that God has done for us and to hear uh, just literally snippets of it tonight um, is very profound. And all those who served and who helped with the Easter fire, our uh, Eucharistic ministers, decorators, especially Maria Modio, does such a wonderful job decorating each year, and the uh, ushers and, and uh, sacristans, and all others who have helped tonight. And I also want to give um, um, just a word of gratitude to our choir um, to surrender and uh, and again our, our beautiful choir here tonight this is our first time doing this here and uh, and so uh, as you can tell when they sang there was a real spirit of gentleness and a faith in, in their music and in the way they presented and uh, again it was very moving so thank you to the choir <laughs> the uh, candles that you have in your pews that you receive coming in if you wouldn't mind when you leave the church there's a table in the lobby if you wouldn't mind taking them with you and just uh, placing them in the table uh, that way our custodian can get an early night's sleep tonight <laughs> you know it doesn't have to come back and work too hard uh, cleaning up uh, but I also want to uh, particularly welcome you all to the parish hall following Mass. Um, just a few minutes uh, to uh, meet uh, our, the new Catholics amongst us and, um, and to congratulate them in person, to socialize with them, be with them, and, uh, and to have some refreshments together. And so again, uh, my thanks to the social committee for uh, arranging that. And of course, Sister Teresa, thank you. Sister Teresa is the coordinator of the RCIA uh, this past year, along with Sister Elizabeth Mary and um, uh, Jennifer Keish and um, uh, Deacon David and, um, and, and Elizabeth, his wife. And I might be forgetting somebody, I apologize. Of course, uh, oh, Diane and Tulio, our seminarian. Tulio Peter, our seminarian. <laughs> you remember the Peter. <laughs> <laughs> the RCIA uh, actually doesn't end tonight. The RCIA ends at Pentecost. The reason for that is because it's called the period, the, the mystagogia. It's called the mystagogia, the period. The mystery still unfolding. And so they'll be coming back on Wednesday nights to share how the mystery is unfolding in their lives. It's a beautiful title, Mystagogia. And so at Pentecost, which we call the birthday of the church, they will uh, feel that they have uh, come a little bit more past Easter and also to the point of the birth of the church. And so I also want to mention to any of you who might be out there who are considering becoming Catholic, please feel free to, to talk to me or to anyone in our community and we'd be happy to give you um, some assistance there. Um, and to anyone who might wish to be part of our RCA team of helping to sponsor and be part of the team, 
please also let me know. It's a wonderful experience, a wonderful experience. I really um, treasured, I've had a, a really wonderful time um, walking amongst these fine and beautiful people who come from so many different backgrounds and cultures and um, who truly give life to our community here at St. Edward's. So to, to you, finally, I, I thank you. And uh, I ask God to bless you and to hold you close to him in his heart. And so, um, and I look forward to seeing you at Mass tomorrow. You want to come back tomorrow? <laughs> now that you can, you know, that now that you can, right? <laughs> and uh, a lot of times, and if you do come back, please let me know, because we have three Masses tomorrow. Let me know if you're here, because we'll congratulate you again. <laughs> and we'll let everybody else see you, okay? So anyway, everybody, have a great night, and, and uh, we'll follow now with our closing prayers for Easter. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. We have a tradition of saying three Hail Marys, so why not tonight? Our Blessed Mother is very much with us. Let us uh, pray uh, for those who may pass uh, in the coming days and for their eternal souls. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn found on page 389, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, page 389. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did on the cross brought
was when you were, oh sorry, because that was when you Thank you for coming. God bless. 